刚才我是我又进去查了一下，因为这个、嗯、这个家伙就是那 Mystic，、嗯、我是有印象他是在航空队的，就是金艾尔他们的，对金艾尔。但是我刚刚查一下，原来是打 AB 的。对的，对。然后现在现在突然想起来，他居然打了个打椅。<笑>然后就感觉还还是有情有可原，哎，其实这也解释了为什么司马老贼这场的表现这么精彩，这么精彩，因为打野都跑去有威胁，不是他有威胁，有威胁，后面有个 AD 背后脊背凉凉的，你知道？但是据说他要去一队了呀，啊，是吧？啊，是的，哎，其实就刚刚那场表现来看的话，两个韩国人还是就是我们目光更多的是放在他们身上的，对，一个是兰博被干 a 的比较多，然后第二个就是盲僧的那一脚，就是他们是很有存在感的，但是他们有没有用就再说，跟他们俩关系。不大<笑>，但是他们很有。这一盘我觉得西呃就呃三个就这老队员啊打得很好，就可圈可点。司马老贼，然后这可圈可点。对，毕竟三个人配合各方面还是挺不错的。是的，看下一盘这两个人表现怎么样吧。主主要我我觉得一方面也是说哈，就在配合上面来讲的话，我们都明白，我们都明白。Hola y bienvenidos es el p l expansiones. Me llamo Nick Taste Nubis Yakovosi. E, Ray and Frost could more. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. I try my best. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Hi, the LPL expansion. I am Nick Tasty of Jacko. With me is Ryan Frost could more. Beautiful, talented, and I forgot the third one. I forget it too. Intelligent, I think. The trifecta, oh, something like that. He thinks. It's one of those things. I don't know. I'm not intelligent. I'm not part of the trifecta. That's on you. So、uh, to recap. W Academy started off a little bit slow last game, but they got that extended laning phase, and you know, <laughs> I don't want to play、uh, favorites here, but、um, how you say, she a wrecked face a. I, you are correct. World Lead Academy going into this best of three again. It's a best of three double elimination tournament. It is one up, so it's game set match for them to continue on. If DK loses here again, it won't be down and out for them. Double elim, they'll just bounce down into that losers bracket. Already joining Energy Pacemaker carries as well as the favorite of Young Glory. So World Lead Academy trying to、uh, take up what Young Glory failed to do and prove that we were in the LPL once, we could requalify again. Picks and bans already on the board. Rise, Lucian, Zillion, Jace, and. Pretty much exactly what we saw last time, for the most part. Twitch being taken out this time around, so we'll see what、uh, Khan goes with for his first pick up here on the side of W Academy. Remember, they are the boys in blue this time around, so get the first pick, get that other side of the map. And hot dog as we await the first pick. It's like 25 seconds. Quacky is on the board. He was banned last time by Quarky. World Lead Academy. Quacky. <laughs> Quacky. By World Lead Academy, it looks like they're going to be prioritizing that Lee Sin Mystic again from the Jin era. Korean transplant in the middle of this team, along with Khan on World Lead Academy, had a fantastic performance on that Lee Sin, particularly in helping snowball his mid lane Shea into a dominant force. Stellar play, Mystic played stellar in that Lee Sin, you know. And if worst comes to worst, maybe Khan could just play him out in the top lane as well. So now we might see the Ezreal, and it looks like Ezreal is being locked in as well with the Janna. So could be bottom lane. We've also seen it being played in the mid lane. The past couple of days in the LSPL, so we're gonna see if Yellow wants to do that or not. Corky Thresh could be a bot lane for the ages right here, ladies and gentlemen, as we're just kind of waiting on them to lock in. And you know, I like that guy's tie. That's a really nice tie. You know, it's just black. Is that a double wins or not? It's important to note that Ezreal did get a slight buff、um, for this patch coming、oh, into his ratios. That said, I think that Corky is undisputedly right now one of the strongest AD carries in lane, just due to the strength of his level one.、Um, but speaking of strength, we have Banana now hovering again, looking for that Jax pickup. Was pretty dominating last time in the top lane. Unfortunately, yeah, it did not translate to success. So going back to the bottom lane, then, if you're DK, do you potentially go for lane swap, or do you force yourself into that two v two? Ah,、uh, I mean, it's hard to say at this point. Please be AP Kogma. Now it looks like he's gonna go utility style. Utility style. Okay, there he goes. He's gonna say utility style with an Ezreal AD carry, and we'll also see if this Ezreal goes the blue build or maybe mixes it up with the Trinity Force in there. But it is going to be that Jax Banana returning to that top lane. Hot dog and Cinder left open again for she. So. He plays Annie. He、oh. plays Cindra. Andy Rex face, and then the Heimerdinger hover just to be a little bit cheeky. Aurelia being hovered over as well, locked in. So we've got those picks basically set in stone. We know where everybody's going on that front. Last pick for DK, waiting on a potential mid laner or maybe another AD carry style thing. 
does have the counter pick. Lulu wouldn't be a terrible choice here. Again, Syndra has the highest burst potential, excuse me, highest single target burst potential in the game with her ultimate right there. If he takes Lulu, he has the wild growth technically to counter to make sure he can't get 100-0. Uh, that said, you're really not looking for dominance again, although he is now hovering the Orianna. Orianna. I like that pick more than Lulu for some reason. Yeah, I mean, you still get the utility. Um, the Shockwave, the Wombo Combo, of course, incredibly powerful, especially with the synergy with Rengar Stealth. Orianna is also a bit more tanky than some of the other traditional mages that we see in the mid lane due to the nature of her shield. Um, we'll see if he picks up Barrier again this time around or if he's going to stick with that Exhaust or maybe stick with that Ignite. Looks like he's going to stick for now. I guess we get to wait for 15 seconds to see if he sticks or not. Otherwise, though, we can talk about these compositions, you know. It seems like, I almost want to say, W Academy got the better of pick ban phase again. Well, they effectively got everything that they wanted. Um, a lot of comfort picks across the board. I am excited to see Khan kind of return to his roots and go more towards that Aurelia Renekton style as opposed to the Rumble. Obviously, the Rumble did not work out very well for him. He's now had pretty much a good feel of uh, Bananas Jacks, especially across his face. And I could say something, but we're we're on air, and I'll I'll censor myself. But it's more than I can say about myself. <laughs> We'll see if he's able to turn this around with the aggression. Well, looks like the loading screen is intact, so the game will be starting momentarily. It'll be number two between WE Academy and Team DK. I don't even know what that stands for. I want to say Donkey Kong because that would be so awesome. Well, their logo but is a knight, and they are, I believe they have a Dota Dark Knight. Team. Dark Knight? I, I don't know what the actual Batman, but I know that their logo has a knight. <laughs> Right, well maybe they're the Dark Knights and they're the Batmen. <laughs> so, loading screen up and out. Looks like they're going to be into Summoner's Rift for Game 2. On the blue side, wearing those blue trunks. The boys in blue, WE Academy, took Game 1 in 32 minutes. On the flip side, flippity flip red, DK. The potential Dark Knights or Donkey Kongs, whatever you want to call them, looking to rebound in this Game 2 and take us to a Game 3. Looks to be another four point. We didn't have an invade last time. Both junglers did start on the top side of the jungle, however. We'll see if they continue with that. <laughs> kind of feeling each other out, Mystic. Getting a good look at Rengar here. Getting a great look at Rengar. <laughs> the cowardly lion. That's what he is. Ooh, Khan starts E first. Isn't that where you're supposed to start first? Uh, typically they'll do Blade Surge to help them last hit, especially if the wave gets pushed in because Aurelia finds her power spike at maxi. level 5. Uh, no, typically, well, I mean, you could. There's flexibility. You're either going to max your W for your sustain for elongated fights, especially if you're against someone tankier, or you'll max your E for the initial burst, but typically that's against squishy opponents. So it's a personal Squish. preference thing. But taking uh, E first... I learned something today. Well, that's good. See how it works out for him. I feel ya. I feel ya. It's a little bit of a ward. They will spot out this bottom lane from DK. It makes sense, though, now that I think about the matchup, because of um, the counter strike from Jax. Like, the fact that when Aurelia procs her true damage, he's just going to go and counter strike and uh, dodge all the damage effectively. So, by maxing E, if, she, if Khan chooses to go that route in the, uh, the lane, he has a bit more guaranteed damage and a bit more guaranteed burst. Yeah, I feel ya. Well, so the junglers, like you said, are starting on the same side of the map again, so we might see maybe an early gank bottom lane, who knows, but lady phase is going to develop, no starts out of the ordinary, everything that everybody has bought looks, you know, good, it's got the seal of approval. There's and then... Corky, that phosphorus bomb level one. It's Corky, it's Corky. Corky pretty much guarantees level two, the phosphorus bomb is incredibly powerful, not only its ability to quickly clear waves, but just the initial damage right there. You kill me, Frost. You got me saying cocky now, and I can't Quarky. stop saying cocky. I can't stop saying it. It's Have like I used to be hooked on car keys. I haven't seen any little video. Okay, there's a little video about uh, Season 3 Worlds, because that was the big quirky Worlds, where everyone built Trinity Force, because it was really strong. And in the video, I believe it's a, a little Pichu video. It, oh, okay. It's Corky. I play Corky because Fleet plays Corky. Oh, okay. Corky. So, That's adorable. Time, yeah, every time I see him, I can't help but think that. Hot dog. And there's that well, too, and there's that lane dominance from SMLZ and Yushe. And you're even seeing the top lane as well. It's like Khan's just bullying the heck out of Banana right now. So... 
Looking pretty good. Both of these junglers finishing their first clears around. So maybe we'll see them gank. Maybe we'll see them go back to farm and who knows. See what they can do. Very, very nice bullying in this bottom lane from WE Academy. However, it should be noticed that Rengar has completed his double buff and is on the top side of the map, currently hanging around his Wraith camp. We'll see if he finds another first blood up on Con top like he did last time, although looks like he's gearing back towards that mid. Maybe just wanted to get a little bit of vision, scout ahead like a Teemo. And not WE Academy moving, basically it's Leeson and Thresh juking out in the jungle, you know, a little bit. Are they going to set up a trap? Trap. They are pinging for it. So they did just get eyes of Rengar into that mid lane. They watched him walk back through mid. He did a good job by not making his jungle pathing a clearant and walking apparent, excuse me, apparent and walking through the lane. Instead, he went up the lane and then chose which way he was going to go in. So blocking vision right there. So Yushe now returning to the bot lane, thinking that Rengar is not going to walk into him. And even still, SMLZ was like, I don't care. I can see CS freely on these guys. They're not going to touch me. So even without his support, he's up there in their faces, just CS and pretty easily having a fun time of it and uh you know early lanes pushed up in favor of we academy so it should be free pickings as far as jungle ganks are concerned for little white hunt from mystic right here just he's going for it he wants rengar he does there we go. he really does <laughs> he's like i'm going Stick for a lane gleason's totally not chasing me i'm going i'm going in Oh, baby, this is going to be fun. This is going to be 2v2 for the ages. So you can see the Counter-Strike jump up. Khan getting stunned up. Mystic coming in from the backside. They don't know. Now they do, and he's taking a lot of damage. Mystic could be going down here. He's trying to safeguard up with the flash. Minions, are they going to be enough? Oh, the leap strike. Under turret, though. Is he going to be able to make it out? I don't think so, but taking another trade. Khan, oh, no! <laughs> okay, okay. There's a couple of really important things. Oh, but hold on a second. Yushe finds his hook and the double play. Oh my god, that was fantastic. And I'm trying to pick it up. It's going to be basically Ezreal on the run. Exhaust taking away onto SMLZ. 2-2 two to two in kills. My god, that top lane play was just awesome as oh, hell. still going for it. Oh, speechless. Caught under turret. The heal's being used up and out. That's going to be Thresh going down. Ezreal picking it up, forcing the Valkyrie. Teleport canceled. And that is going to be 3-2 to two now in kills. And Ezreal picking up a return. Nicely done. That's actually huge for Khan. The teleport was cancelled, which means that he cannot fail in his lane right here because it would pretty much spell the end of him. He doesn't have the teleport as a safeguard to get back to his lane if Jax bullies him out to pick up any extra CS. And you cannot fall behind on experience in the top lane, especially the solo lane like that. Not even Dragon Contestion on the table. Just you can't fall behind in experience. So no safeguard there for the Aurelia should she fail in this next set of trades. Uh, let's talk about that top lane. Obviously, Holy the real Lord. heroes were the creep wave, and there was huge miscommunication between Mystic and Khan, which, funny thing, they're both Korean, so n there was no language issue Ew. there. Uh, Khan said, I don't know what you're doing, there's an army of minions here, and Mystic was like, let's go in. Died to creeps. Speaking of oh. dying to creeps. <laughs> <laughs> Quick and easy, they jumped up, Karen missed it, but UJ snuck up into that lane. So three to three now, tied up on kills. Pick up another one for that bottom lane, and they might be able. They might try to dive. Who knows? They might try to push down this turret if they can. Get as much as possible. They're going for it. Phosphorus bomb, and is going to be the kill. Going over to SMLZ on the Corky. Mystic paying a lot of attention to that bot side on the map, really using the pressure that SMLZ and Yushe have created on that tower with the Corky and the Thresh pick. Constantly in that jungle, warding it up, making sure that they know where Ringar is at all times, and reaching around for little dives like that. So we'll see if that punishment leads to an early dragon. Khan just pushing up the wave so far in the turret here, forcing Banana farm under that turret. Now the Cowardly Lion running through the backside of the jungle, going over to that wolf camp. Hot dog, 4-3 to three right now, 300 gold, 400 gold in favor of WE Academy. No turrets gone by here, 7 minutes in. No dragon fights as well. Might see one of those in the near future, though, with that teleport being not like you're saying. But then again, both top laders' teleports are down for the moment. So, could see a play. Looks like a ward is going to be placed out from the other on that mid side. Get some control, wants to keep as much vision as possible. And the early game is progressing as usual. It is important, though, that we are entering the stage of power spikes and everyone's getting their ultimate. <laughs> Um, as well as starting to build up some pretty key items, the sheen on both of the bot lanes there, although SMLZ does have kind of the next pieces of his phage, so a bit of a power spike there as far as itemization for him. That ultimate will be available relatively soon. Actually, I think he just got it. Yep. Power spikes. 
power spikes. Even more important, Rengar should Nailed be getting, uh, level 6 as well, which will open up the stealth and the submarine option should they try to synergize this shockwave Rengar ult on poor Syndra there. Yeah. Speaking of the mid lane, it looks like a pretty even, kind of fairly good matchup so far this game. Everybody, it's pretty even on the lane despite a 10 CS advantage, you know, for Shie, so... They're having a good time there, both with chalices, both just kind of farming it up a little bit, waiting for those fights for rest because whichever one of them gets the jump on the other, that's going to be when they start bringing it to hometown. <laughs> You're correct, Yellow, not having as much of a problem as he did last time around, although he gets stunned up right there. doesn't look like she is going to follow up with the ult, though, but he did ignite him. Maybe he was. If he would have if he would have landed that orb, he might have actually gotten for the ult. So I think he was trying, like you said, yeah, to put enough orbs under the ground to get enough burst damage. Boist, boist damage. I feel like Curly from the three. Boist, boist damage. I'm sick. Leave me alone. <laughs> I don't oh feel baby. Good. Yeah, I feel you. I need to be stuck with me for the next several hours too. I'm so happy. Wee! You should be. This is like a cast of the days gone by, man. This is like a return. Shockwave up and down. Lion boy. Lil White picking up the kill. On to Shie in the mid lane. You watch it, you're like, am I going to mention the shockwave? Am I not going to mention the shockwave? I was thinking about it. I was more trying to think about how I was going to try to express that this is like... Oh, that was a nice death sentence in the box as well. Just bursting him up and away. And SMLZ picks up an easy kill. And could this be the turret? Could this be the dragon? You know, Jan's not going to be able to defend. They might be able to get this turret on this push. He does have the flash and the ultimate available, so yeah, John is going to have to go ahead and just back off of that. Does not want to face an insect from Mystic right there. Looks like they're going to sacrifice the tower. We'll see where World Elite Academy go after this. This could be an easy 2-0 match. DK not putting up much of a fight. Well, still a relatively close game for the most part. We can't count anybody out yet, but see how it goes. We break that 10-minute marker. It looks like W Academy maybe. Maybe he's counting out that dragon. No, he's not going to count out that dragon. So... They don't get the turret, they get the kill, and they don't get the turret or try to make a play for Dragon. It makes sense that they would just keep the lane phase, they're already winning it, it's a good source of free farm and EXP, and again, World Lead Academy likes to extend their lane phase. Not taking the tower or leaving it up just allows them to do that. Well, it opens them up basically a thousand gold lead to start things off here, just pretty much based purely on, you know, CS and those, those are a little bit of a kill spread, so... Now we get to see where things start shaking up a bit. We're getting to this point where you could start calling it more of a mid-game type of thing. You know, Khan and Banana just duking it out a little bit, trying to get as much damage on the other as possible, but they're tanky top laners, so they're not going to be able to kill each other. They're just going to, like, keep duking it out. The stun up when he goes on, they actually might have a pretty good example here. He's going to use the ultimate up, and Khan not in a good position right now, so he's got to get the hell out of dodge. He's trying to dash up and away, and... Manly jukes. Khan gets out of there with his life. Yeah, some pretty fancy footwork to go up and around right there, and Blade Surge is way back, kind of stalling for minions to take down enough health so he could find the reset. Are you still trying? I mean, they're still duking it out with each other up there. He's doing a great job now, just kind of sustaining himself back up before he looks for the next engagement with Jax. He is at a bit of an item disadvantage. Jax has the Phage built up, whereas Khan is just sitting on the Sheen Longsword, so it doesn't have that Ruby Crystal as well as the uh, movement speed proc that the Phage is going to grant him. Well, all that means is Dragon gone by. Death Sentence, very nicely done. Phosphorus Bomb as well, but he's going to Arcane Shift up and out. So while that was happening, we were looking at the top lane. Dragon goes by. 2WE Academy, now they want to look for this bottom lane tier 1 turret. And uh, Mystic walked over reward, but he didn't know it. He spotted out the wrong area. So, those back out a little bit and keep on shoving it up. But even still, open up a nice gold lead for them. 2,000 after that dragon. Definitely, we do have Rengar kind of sneaking through the back. Has the ultimate available. See if he's going to go for the stealth. Stealth and in. He's a big boy. He's jumping in SMLZ, getting rooted to the ground, and absolutely destroyed by that true shot barrage. And, uh... Whatever the heck that W is called, it's like, you know, line shot of fun time that goes through people. We'll just call it that. Well, we're 5-5 five to five right now, Frosky Wosky. Is that Arcane Barrage? Arcane Barrage is... is... Mystic Shot, Arcane Barrage, Essence Flux, and True Shot Barrage? I don't know. I don't think so. It's been a while since I played Ezreal. It's been a while since I played League of Legends. <laughs>
Even no, I'm just kidding. DK's Four hours. To pick up a kill right there into that bottom lane. Started to even things oh, out. Still, gold lead still in favor of World Lead Academy, partly in due to uh, the dragon pickup as well as kind of the CS advantages across, spe specifically in that top lane there, Aurelia. Nice little tin CS cushion. Hey, you called it huge. You called it right. It's every time the leap strike comes in, you know, from banana. Khan's just there with the burst he stun up, and now trying to go in the middle. It's going to be the shockwave flashing out, but Ignite is ticking away. One more auto attack picks it up, but he should be able to survive right here unless the tick saves it. Yeah, he's going to make it. Fine. Nicely done. And 6-5, to five, solo kill in the mid lane. It's GA making things happen. Really curious with a back position right there from you. Oh, nice sidestep from the True Chef Raj. GA walking away with his life right there. Doing a little bit of a two-step square dance in there out in the middle of the lane. Nicely done. <laughs> Jukesy jukes. I was going to say, okay, at least someone was paying attention because it looked like Yellow was not paying attention. Kind of backing a little bit too far in front of his tower. He gets punished by instantly. And that is going to be the bottom lane Turk going down. First one of the day. Well, in the game, anyway. Going over to the side of WE Academy. Tier 1 bottom lane turret. Now maybe they'll try to make a play on the mid lane. No dragon to take for several more minutes. So, you know, they've got a lot of time to evaluate what they want to do next. Maybe they just ward up and get control around that pit. You know, for the four minutes, who knows? They can do whatever they want to. They're ahead. You are correct. It is now about where SMLZ is going to make his presence felt. If he's going to rotate to that mid lane, if he's going to go back, maybe pick up some wards and continue to put apply pressure to that bottom lane. Looks like he is moseying up towards the mid, though. Moseying up on that little quirky. <laughs> he's just kind of hovering up. He's a little whiskey delta guy, you know, just slowly walking up there. Hey, I'm in a helicopter. Oh, there's that great video where, uh, you know, it's like one of those little MS Paint videos where Quirky's plane gets shot down and he stands up out of his plane and he's like giant. And I think it's Twisted Fate and Victor and Quirky just goes on a murderous rampage, like chases them down and just like this giant football player. Yeah! It's pretty good. Absolutely awesome. I just assume I think... he's like giant inside his little plane. Probably. He's probably like, it's like, I mean, he's done, he doesn't have leg room. That thing looks small as heck. He's, he's just, you know, he folds up. Yeah, he's, he's I mean, he's kind of crammed. It's like Shaquille O'Neal trying to drive a Ford Focus. <laughs> Thank you for that image. Awesome image. Yeah, it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> All right, everybody, so. In the they went up to the mid lane. They went up to the mid lane, and then Ezreal pushed it, and they came back down. Story of my life. There we go. It was actually really smart of Ezreal. A lot of times, AD carries will freeze the wave, um, not understanding that they kind of screw their mid laner over in effect, just because, obviously, if they freeze the wave right there, not, they're not creating a pressure point for the enemy bot lane to respond to, so they're just going to walk. Uh oh hold on a second, though, because here comes the submarine. Rango Durango going big boy. He misses a shockwave courtesy of that route. Jump up and down. And it's going to be GA picking up the kill. Return goes over to Janna. Mystics can be able to walk away from this one. But 7-6. to six, And it's like, you know, that was well done. Did he miss? It's like the shockwave was I think he got him on the tip because of the, the route. Either I don't way. Know. That was awkward. They but, create the pressure point bottom. SMLZ is pulled down there, and they finally get the submarine onto that mid lane. And now in the top lane, Khan. Oh. The burst damage. The burst damage from that Eon Aurelia is just massive. It's like an easy turnaround from the leap strike, and he just forces each other out of lane. He's going to get the second turn of the game. Third turn of the game, mind you. So. Da -da -da -da. World Lead Academy now starting to slowly pull away with this game as far as gold is concerned. Khan. Really asserting his dominance in this 1v1 with Jax, which yep. eliminates a lot of their pressure. If Jax can't duel Aurelia, and they try to go for the split push. And, and you talk about W Academy being a team that likes to go for, you know, longer laning phases. He's and this never time leaving it's top. Like, We're getting the hell out of this laning phase. Uh, uh, going for this mid lane turn, shoving up the wave. Dragon's up in 20 seconds. W Academy automatically on their mind. They're going to get as much control in this general vicinity as possible. Take out that pink ward. Get it. Get it done. 17-17 on the clock. And they're going to be looking for this dragon up in seven seconds. And that is where they're going to focus their attention. Uh, he backed, and then he walked to the dragon. We'll see if he... Yeah, he's going to walk top. He's not going to spin his teleport right there because he doesn't want to give DK a numbers advantage by allowing him to teleport up there and Jax to teleport back down. But it looks like it's going to be uncontested by World Elite Academy. And DK not even pressuring the mid-tier tower. Too afraid of that flank right there. I mean, you know, they tried to get, they tried to get a steal. They tried to have... 
you know, Feng go for one of those half court shots, but it just completely airballed and everybody just booed him. Oh. So, juke it out. It's going to be the top lane is taken down, courtesy of the stun. Counter strike, Jaxi Poo picking up the kill. Down goes Khan. And this is the big thing. We were talking about Khan being able to 1v1 duel the Jax right now. It turns around. Doesn't get the long, elongated sustained fight. It goes straight into a burst initial hard engage, and Jax comes out on top. Aurelia needs time to prep and to whittle Jax down and make use of the fact that she has sustained built into her kit onto the W without being able to play with that as well as the ultimate. And the, the straight 1v1 hard engage, we're doing this right here and now. Jax comes out on top. So better think that uh, Khan will not make that same mistake again. So despite a 3,000 gold lead for WE Academy, you know, 7-7 seven seven in kills, 2-1 to one in turrets, still a relatively close game for the most part. And, uh, you know, we're getting to that point. We're getting to that point where these team fights are going to get bigger and bigger. Teleports up for both of these top laners, so. That one was huge. Yeah, that 1v1 one one was incredibly huge, and it's going to set the stage, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> WE Academy pushing on this mid lane tier 1 turret. They're going to open up the map right here and right now by taking it down or not. Come on, come on, get it. They got it. Get, get it. They got it. Open up the map. Three to one on turrets. Taking down all of the tier ones, all the base turrets. Immediately. And now. Banana knows that he can now win the duel. Banana. Starts to apply pressure into the side lanes, making use of the teleport. They're looking Banana for pressure. push now, and they're running World League Academy around the map. Banana pressure. He's teleporting up and out as well. And that's got to hurt. That's a heartbreaker. They tried, and he just totally... Told to get that weak stuff out of there. Unfortunately, DK don't make the most of it again. Uh, they're never quite in position to really make full use and completely capitalize on the pressure points that Banana creates around the map. WE Academy sticking together for the most part, you know. Now, taking on the blue buff. It's going to go over in the mid lane to Yeller. Old Yeller. Getting up on the blue buff. <laughs> I like how we went from yellow to Yeller. Yellow to old Yeller. He's old Yeller. <laughs> no, man, come on. So if you're just joining us in game one, WE Academy <laughs> took it in 32 minutes after picking up a Baron and storming into the base for the win. This time around, they seem to have a handle on it, but DK is not going away. This is still a very close game. And over the side, Mystic gets the Sonic Wave to land. They're going to push for this Tier 2 bottom lane turret, see if they can try to make something happen, but it will be a 5v5 oh, engagement. Oh, baby, here we go. It's going to be SMLZ just getting absolutely wrecked. Jax picks up. Well, they're going to get the death sentence. He's going to get forced out. No Counter-Strike today. And basically, Shea doesn't get an opportunity for anything right there. I don't even think he... Oh, he did use his ultimate. Hot dog. So no Ringar, kills. <laughs> a Rengar ultimate into a shockwave completely deletes SMLZ from the fight. And Rengar is actually able to hippity hop out of there. Great disengage from Shie so they don't lose any more of their members. But that is a one for no trade and completely stalls out the World League Academy push on that bottom side tower. And they still have a gold lead though. 2003 that you know is getting up there. But DK, their confidence is like huge right now. That, that right there just basically boosted them to the top. They're like, oh, this is an easy win for us now. So DK, maybe going to try to get the better of WEA right here. Farming up this mid lane is Fang. He's going to get a good one. So let's take a look at CS counts, shall we? It's Aurelia up in the top lane despite being down two kills. So that gold easily swayed over to the Jacks. 71 to 66 in the juggle. 182, 200. Middle lane going over to Oriana doing a nice job containing GA Syndra this time around. And then a 50. Oh, wait, no. Is that 101 or is that 191? I can't see. I don't have good eyesight. I think I'm it's 101. I'm surprised that Shie decided to rush second item Zhonya's Hourglass on the uh, the Syndra as opposed to going more damage oriented, especially 195. his lane opponent was an Orianna as opposed to, you know, someone like a Zed where you would make full use of the Seeker Arm Guard stat. Uh, that may be hurting them as far as these team fights here and finding a big power spike like what Orianna's fighting with the Death Cap second item complete. So, see how that's going to uh, to affect these future team fights here. Um, other items on the board, we do have Ezreal just finished up his uh, Mana Moon, so pretty close on those tier stacks. We'll see when that decides to upgrade. Yeah, I haven't seen any triple tier comps today. I'm really disappointed that we haven't gotten to see those. <laughs> Always love the triple tier compositions. WE Academy, push it up, hand to the base here, you know, into the jungle of W. Oh, a flash. I'm a little bit behind, but he does get the flash up, and that's going to be easy pickings. They get the kill. It's Aurelia picking it up. Now duking up a kick over the wall. Are you kidding me? That is just how you do it. Textbook, ladies and gentlemen. Shockwave does absolutely jack diddly squat. 
Dragons up in 50 seconds. WE Academy now with those two nice picks. Well done. It had been such a calm and controlled game, and then instantly World Lead Academy goes on the aggressive right there. Fantastic kickback from Mystic. They're going for Baron. They are going for Baron. Uh, I don't know about this. Hold on, let's see how it goes. The shockwave is not available, so big AoE damage down for DK right there, but they have to know this. They're rushing over it. Baron has been started about half health right here. Oriana Ball gives them vision. Yeah, they're all still pretty far. I mean, G over there trying to get the flash, gets through scattering of the weak, and basically jumping up in on the yellow. Look at SMLZ just going ham to the backside, Monsoon as well. True shot barrage onto a couple doing it. And SMLZ picks up one. Aurelia with the second one. Back coming in is Rango. He picks up the return kill. So down goes SMLZ. Turning for another two for one over at WE Academy. No Baron, but they do make a little bit of plays happen. Nice exchange. Dragons up and live if they want to go make a play for that. DK, honestly, with the backs being forced on the W Academy, could go try to make that one happen right now. Big issue. World Lead Academy got those great picks in DK's own jungle. Was looking to translate that into the second tier mid tower. Pulled off of it to get the Baron and then kind of get punished. They do get ahead with the trade right there, but they don't pick up any objectives for kind of the Mystic. advantage that they were gotten. Oh, Mystic. Is he going to do this? He wants it. Oh, he got it. <laughs> Wow, spoiler alert, I'm a second I'm like a second behind you. That's disappointing. Doggone it. Nicely done. Steal it up. Teleport being forced as well. So now it's Khan just going in totally ham, dude. Are you serious? Getting a weak scattering. No counter strike today. Death ends up and down goes banana. Twelve to ten, WE Academy. Well, we were just talking about how they weren't able to capitalize on any sort of objectives when they did get the picks. Instead, this time around, handed that dragon as well as some free picks. We'll see if they look back towards that Baron, although with a giant wave pressure on the top lane, doubt that they'll be that risky again as Khan makes his way that direction. Yo, man, free farm all day long. It's like, hey, see this big wave of minions right here? <laughs> Want to see me take it down in three auto attacks? There we go. Why is so, he southern? I don't know. I've just been totally going for the southern side of things it's today. Korean. You don't you, well, you know what? Maybe he's South Korean. I'm trying to remember his uh yuck, 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 yuck. Southern. His uh game game gamer tag. I'm trying to I'm completely spacing this uh, handle from Korea. Korean it was, handle. It was hand something, hambalong or something like that. Hambalong? Yeah, before it was Kong, because he changed his name when he came to China. Well, is a South Korean, so is part of some kind of South Southern. So I guess some South Koreans maybe talk like they're from Georgia. <laughs> One can only dream. That would no. be hilarious. That would be hilarious if you got the no. inside deets on voice communications from like SK Telecom, and they all just talk like that. Hey, dude, get her done, still dragging. No, maybe not. Faker solo, kill him out. Where are you, NASCAR? No. Okay, oh, here we go. 26 minutes back you into this game. You are killed. I know. Man. I'm sorry, Tasty. It's early. I'm sick. I can't I can't go NASCAR with you today. I can't do it. But Ringo can go we deep. Watch NASCAR. There's the shockwave. Deep, down, deep downfield. Shockwave. Hail Mary. Touchdown pass. WE Academy getting destroyed right now. Out of the zone. Yes. Counter-Strike. Stun up. True shot barrage. Easy. Pretty much just killed out there. Mystic getting healed up and runs out of there. Barely stays alive. But even still, two down. Blinking HP bars for none. Very well done fight. Stack it up by DK. Saved by the bell. DK find the picks. They are now looking towards Baron. It's worded up by Wordly Academy, so they know that this is happening. Question is, can they have... Oh. No, they're going to wait for the picks. Sneaking they're waiting for the picks, and they are definitely going to go into these... Well, he got them out. Nicely done. I feel terrible because I'm a second behind you, and you go, I'm like, oh. Oh, I'm just like, oh. Oh. So DK doesn't uh, take any objective off of their picks again, kind of the story of this game. Now it's back to this ARAM in the mid lane. And despite it all, still 4,000 gold in favor of WE Academy. You can never count out the Wombo Combo. Like you said, you can't count out DK. I got the never Oriana, the DK. Shockwave. Shockwave is about to come back up, so expect another explosive team fight to be centered around that cooldown, specifically with the Rengar ultimate, although that's a little bit farther out. Oh, we're 28 minutes into this game, just about, ladies and gentlemen. And despite a decent-sized gold lead for WE Academy, it is too close to call. DK winning fights left and right. 
both of these teams trying to find a way to close this one out, try and pick it up. Already, you can tell it's definitely going to be longer than the last game. W.E. Academy making a play for this bottom lane tier two, but Minuwave gets taken down by Fang, so they're going to have to wait. They got this one, middle to go for the turret. Janna Shield might be able to secure safety, and uh, Banana's trying to come down from the flippity flip. He's going to try to flank him. Here we go. Um, this is the days. Right he's in between two members. Okay, there he goes. I was going to say. Oh, yeah. He's going to... Oh, uh, too close to call. Dribble Sticky situation. Wall. Has a nice war hop over the wall to get out of there. Yeah, it was not a bit of a quagmire. So now W Academy come back around to the mid lane. Turret is half HP. They're going to try to get this tier two mid lane turret. And they will. So nicely done. 4 to 2 on turrets. W Academy, you know, playing very, very, how you say, textbook. They're definitely playing really textbook right now. Far 12 more to 12. controlled of their waves and their pressure points this game right yes. there. Playing back and forth between the mid and the bot wave now, looking to control Vision over the Baron. They clear out the wards. Haven't started it yet. There we go. There's the leash. Oh, baby. And, you know, if they would have started up a little bit earlier, they would have had it done by now, and, you know, DK wouldn't have been out of their base, but now they might be able to get ward covered down, but it's getting, it's getting melted very, very fast. We're going to see what they can do. Frosty, don't spoil it for me. you got to let me have this one. Jump in, Con. Jump over the wall. Is he going to get the steal? Not gonna go quick and easy to mystic that's yeah, not gonna happen con over the side though trying to do as much as he can with those blades and jump up do anything possible con flashing up and out monsoon being used out unstoppable you know unleashed power all the goodies thresh picking up one coming down for two death sentence going and it goes to smlz trying to run up valkyrie up and in on this poor little yeller old yeller is it time to put her down yes it is 15 to 12 going for the inhib. That was such an unfortunate monsoon right there from Chin. He actually pushed everyone out of the shockwave by everyone. I think it was only two members of World Elite Academy, but I think one of them was SMLZ, so kind of an unfortunate timing right there as World Elite Academy marched down win. this mid lane and take the inhibitor win? tower. They have a minion wave behind him. It's only two members. And this oh, man. To be game set and matches They're going World for Academy. it. Possibly. Can, can DK hold this one off? Oh, ho, ho, ho. One extra turret falls down. The second turret's going to be falling down as well. Trying to go as much as they can, just bursting him up and away. One for Syndra, two for Syndra. One over to Aurelia. Next is turret falls. And WE Academy, ladies and gentlemen. 2-0 victory looking really crisp versus DK. The Dark Knights or the Donkey Kongs, whatever you want to call them. WE Academy making much it look easy. stronger performance from their top laner Khan this time around to really put Banana in his place as he went back to back with that Jax pick. But kind of the hero of the game, of course, is going to go to SMLZ. Both games back to back. I believe he went legendary both times there, especially in the back half of those fights. And story of the day is that World Elite Academy extends their lane phase and comes out big late game. And now the next matchup is what? Gam T versus Wings of Aurora? Yes. Is that right now, or is that like after a delayed time? I believe we'll probably have a 10 minute break in between the games as the players get set up. It could be as little as three minutes though. As little as three minutes. Well, I guess we better get into a break then. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Nick Taste and Majaco with Ryan Frost, and Moore, and this is the LPL expansion here on LPL EN. We're gonna take a short break in the action. When we come back, second, fi fourth, final set of the day between Gamti and Wings of Aurora. Chishinigashi 很高兴就是能有这次的机会来参加这个解说吧因为我知道小新是在这个之前S的时候在北京的这个演播厅也是参与了这样的一个直播然后也是做了很多很多的功课可见为了解说这样一个道路可以一帆风顺我觉得也是
对，这是我第一次来到这边，嗯、呃，感觉这边很很新啊，就很高大上啊，而且，嗯、呃，而且能作为就是比较官方的一个一个比较高大上的舞台，我觉得挺挺高兴能参与到这，而且能看到一些就是，嗯、呃，也是比较高端的一些队伍吧，反正就很开心吧，希望以后能多来。那之前是做了很长时间这个 LSTR 的解说，嗯、那这一次 TJ 大奖赛也是为了之后的职业联赛输送很多优秀的队伍。嗯、那呃，看到这些队伍，你有没有自己比较支持的？呃，其实我刚才解说的那两场，像 YG 对 VCS 这两个队伍都还比较熟悉，因为之前解说 LSTR 的时候。